Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Look MRI. Now, in my last video, I went over the differences between an open MRI scanner with a low magnetic field strength and a closed MRI scanner with a high magnetic field strength. And again, this is the difference. The low field scanner has a flat plate up top, a flat plate down bottom, and a very wide open configuration. And then the high field MRI scanner that is closed looks like a donut like this. Now I'd like to go over some of the images um, from a high field versus low field and show you the difference. So that high, high magnetic field strength from the closed scanner, the donut type scanner, does provide better image quality. So I'm going to show you a view here of the internal auditory canals. We have the low field scanner on the left hand side, the high field scanner on the right hand side. This can vary significantly from uh, low field MRI scanner to low field MRI scanner. This one is about average. I've seen some that look uh, a lot better and actually closer to this. But this is a fairly typical low field MRI scanner of the internal auditory canals. So this little area here going horizontally is called the internal auditory canal. It's filled with fluid and also it's filled with a couple of little bitty nerves. And if we come over here, we can see a semicircular canal that looks like a ring. This is one of the three semicircular canals on the left hand side. Now let's go over to the high field MRI scanner. We see the same exact anatomy. We can see the nerves here, though, a little bit better. You can see the two nerves individually coming through the internal auditory canals. And we can see the semicircular canal here. Over here is the cochlea in front. And you can see the image quality is a little bit better. And again, I've seen some MRIs uh, in the low field with special sequences that can look almost identical to this. They're not quite as sharp and clean, but you do get really great anatomy sometimes. But uh, typically, the MRI um, on the high field scanning is just a little bit better. And for things like internal auditory canals and other things, we prefer to do it on the high field MRI scanner um, unless the patient is claustrophobic because of that difference in image quality. MRI of the brain, this is a high field scanner on the left, a low field scanner on the right hand side. They look very, very similar. Again, it's really dependent on the low field MRI scanner. There's lots of variability. High field scanners usually all look good, and low field MRI scanners, sometimes you have very good ones for brains. Other times you may have a scanner that just doesn't do that good of a job. Um, but this is a fairly typical example of uh, the low field looks you know, pretty good. You can see how everything is just not quite as clean as the high field scanner. This is a view of the lumbar spine. And on the left hand side you see white fluid in the spinal canal and these little bitty dots are the nerves going down through the spinal canal. The vertebral body is here. On the low field scanner over here on the right hand side you see the image quality is just not quite as good. It's not quite as sharp and clean. You do see these little nerves in the spinal canal look pretty clean and sharp but the uh, muscles are just not quite as sharply defined. These little bitty tiny blood vessels here, you don't really see them, they're kind of blurred out. So um, the image quality you can see it's a little bit better, but if you had a disc herniation it would be very hard to miss because image quality on these is very good, just not quite as good. This is an example of the lumbar spine on the same person. They had been scanned on a high field scanner here on the left, then they came back later, and so it's a nice opportunity to see the exact same patient um, the difference between them. So this is on the left hand side we see these little holes which are called the neural foramina and in the foramina we see these little dots. The dots are the nerves coming out through those holes to exit. And so on the left hand side there's a small protrusion here, this little black area protruding out. And on the uh, low field scanner when they came back we could see it again. And on both scanners we would see the protrusion. We wouldn't miss it at all. But it's just a little bit cleaner, sharply, more sharply defined. Also, the nerve is a little sharp, more sharply defined on the high field scanner. But again, we would not miss this disc herniation here. Um, we can see it almost exactly the same, but this is just a little easier to read, more pleasing to the eye, and really super subtle things may show up here that might not show up here. But most things that are significant would show up on both. This is a high field MRI scanner over here, over here on the left and a low field on the right. And this is a knee, and we're looking at a, a meniscus, a lateral meniscus. And here's the front of the lateral meniscus. It looks like a little wedge triangle. Here's the back. And on the high field scanner, we can see a little bit of horizontal signal here within it. But you see these very subtle findings. You can see some bony trabecula. On the low foot MRI scanner, it's just not quite as clean. And this is a little bit of motion, unfortunately, on this one. And a good young patient, these can look almost identical. It'll be hard to tell them apart. But if you have a patient that's not that great, then the difference can be very significant where the MRI scanner is faster and better quality. And you can really tell the difference. So that is the end. Thank you very much for watching.